Okay, I'm gonna go up here to the boss. I'm gonna just throw a nade down right here so you can just see the damage reduction. Like, look at my health bar. Look, look at this. And I can also shoot the boss. So now he does reduce damage. Uh, he, yeah, he does reduce damage because of Cycle Hack. And I, I'm literally not playing the game. I still have Protective Light available. Let me throw another nade. Uh, so when I do get weak, and now I'm taking even more reduced damage. Uh, yeah, like th this build's insane. Yo, what's going on guys? It's Rez. In this video, I want to go over a combination that I don't see a lot of people use on the Hunter and also go over a little build that I made with it. And that is involving all around the new Renewal Grass Exotic. This exotic is literally one of the best exotics on the Hunter, in my opinion. Obviously, it's been kind of outshone with Void 3.0 being out, but Renewal Grass basically is going to make your Dustful Grenade have a much larger effect radius and allies inside the Dustful to take reduced damage and targets inside the area to do reduced damage. So basically, your dust field is bigger, you take reduced damage in the dust field, and then the enemies inside of it also are going to deal reduced damage. So it's a very, very tanky exotic. Now with that in mind, I wanted to see how tanky we could make this hunter, and as you saw from the title, this is going to be basically making your hunter into a titan. This build is insanely strong for survivability, and it is also very, very fun to play because you're just going to be running and melee at everybody with the glaive. So getting right into our subclass, we're going to be running Touch of Winter and Grim Harvest. Grim Harvest is going to be good so we can pick up elemental shards when we kill frozen or slow targets. We also have Touch of Winter, so our dust Dustwalk grenade is going to be even larger. This does also increase the effect with Renewal Grass. They do stack and you get a very large crystal as well. So your dust field is just going to be insane. Now your dust field has a minute and four second cooldown and with the hunter discipline it goes to 24 seconds and to make that even better we're going to look at these fragments. We have whisper endurance so your slow is better so obviously your dust field is going to be even better now. A whisper of shards so when you shatter a stasis crystal you temporarily gain grenade regeneration. Once you just shatter that one crystal it spawns you actually will get full grenade energy back with some of your mods. So then we have whisper of chains when you're near a frozen target or a stasis crystal you take reduced damage. Then whisper of torment so we can get some grenade energy back when we take damage then also whisper of rhyme so when you collect a stasis shard you're going to get an overshield so as you see a lot of this is vault around you know taking damage the damage you take is going to be reduced you're going to have an overshield healing you basically then you want to get that grenade back to also further increase your damage reduction and then the slow is obviously just a nice touch to make things even more weaker in the dust grenade now what i was just talking about with whisper of shards if you take two grenade kickstarts this is going to make it when you expand your grenade, you get a little bit of energy back. So if we actually just take a look at it really quick, if you throw your grenade, you get that little chunk of energy back and then you can just come up with your glaive and you're going to be able to break it. And then as you see, you're going to get your full grenade energy back with just a five second cooldown. The glaive shot will actually one shot it, which plays really nice in this build, because if you don't need the resistance, you can just shoot it, get your grenade back and just start mailing everything. But if you do need the resistance, you could just keep the you know shard up to get resist times three. And then you're just going to be able to melee everything around it. And then when you're done, just shoot it and then, you know, go into the next fight and you'll have your next grenade. Now, obviously, since you're killing slow targets, you're also getting that overshield again. And you're going to be able to just live forever with just the subclass itself. Now, if we actually take a look at our weapons of choice, you can kind of run whatever, but for sure run the Enigma. And you specifically want the Enigma because of the Psycho Hack perk. So it's the same damage, but this weapon lowers the target's damage output for a short duration. So now you're going to lower their damage output even more than what your exotic is already doing. And then if you have something like Grave Robber on your glaive, you can shoot the crystal to get your grenade back, then go melee enemy, and you're never going to have to reload the glaive. And it's going to be a constant chain uh, back and forth. Now, I'm also running the brand new SMG, the Force and Ignite Nightmare. This is a stasis weapon, which is good. I don't have a god roll, but you would want headstone on here. But again, this also has the cycle hack trait to reduce damage of enemies. Then I also am running a Zephyr. You can run whatever. I just like this because we're going to play into Font of Might, and you're going to be able to just melee any close range enemy because obviously you're going to be using the Glaive a lot for a lot of enemies. So if it's a tanky enemy, you can just swap to this while you have Font of Might proc and instantly kill them. Now, talking about Font of Might, let's get into the mod. So obviously Font of Might, so when you pick up a element wallet match your subclass energy type, basically your weapons, your stasis weapons for this build are going to do increased damage. That's why I would recommend trying to get a God Roll Force and Nightmare because it's going to make this build even better. Now to easily get Font to Might, I'm also going to be running Elemental Shards. So Stasis Shards count as Stasis Elemental Wells. So now when you pick up your Elemental Shards from Grim Harvest, they do count as Elemental Wells. So you're going to be proccing Font to Might. I'm also going to be running Elemental Charge. So I become Charger Light when I pick up an Elemental Well. This is going to be really good as well. So when I pick up a Shard, now I'm getting Charge Light and Font to Might to take advantage of Charge Light. I am going to be running Protective Light. This is just to help with the tankiness of the build. 
it's this build is literally based all around getting as much resist as possible so not taking protective light i feel like would be doing this build wrong and you want to be a titan with this build you want to be super duper tanky and protective light will give you another 10 percent damage reduction if you do get really weak but that's it for the combat mods the other mods are actually very interesting as well so this is a seasonal mod psionic forging so you increase the duration of the cycle hack origin trait so this is going to make your damage reduction from your two weapons right here even better so now whenever you shoot enemies or melee an enemy or whatever you're going to be able to make them do even more less damage which is very very good also on my chest piece i am running the thermal shock plating so i get reduced incoming slow damage and arc damage plus i have void resistance on so you have resistance to all three elements on top of having protective light on top of having renewal grasp on top of having your stasis subclass on top of your overshoulder you're getting on top of the cycle hack tree you can kind of see how everything is working together to make you literally the tankiest that you can be and it's honestly kind of crazy now the other little Thing i'm running is also suppressive glaive so now whenever your glaive hits an enemy not only are enemies going to be doing an insane amount of reduced damage to you you're very tanky against that damage as well now you just suppress them while they're being slowed and frozen and your enemies literally can't do anything so like i said now they're not doing damage they can't move they can't like literally use any abilities it, it's it's insane how ridiculous this build is. And we also have energy vampirism. So you gain energy for the least charge building when you suppress a target. This does actually work with suppressive glaive. It has like a little intrinsic cooldown or inherent cooldown. It seems like uh, you can only like proc it like pretty much once per grenade charge. But honestly, you get a pretty sizable chunk. So if you're ever in a boss fight, you need to just suppress an enemy and get another dust field. You can totally do that. So that's the build. I'm going to run up here and kind of show it off to you guys really quick. I actually am already charged a light, but you can imagine once you throw your dust field, you have your resist. This guy's eventually going to freeze, but you can stab him. And now he's going to have the cycle hack. So he takes reduced damage. Well, he does reduce damage, excuse me. Now I also have an overshield. I have my stasis damage weapon boost. So I can swap to something like my SMG or my sword to do even more damage. I already have another dust soul grenade. So I can freeze all those enemies. And if I want to hit the crystal, they all die, which is cool. Again, still stacking the overshield up. I'm about to have another dust foot over here for these enemies coming out. And you can kind of already see just how tanky and how everything can just chain together it's honestly kind of insane and again since you do have fontamite if you need to swap to something over like your sword we kill this frozen target we get a, a, a shard or whatever and now your sword is doing more damage and you can do some power attacks in there and you're going to be able to literally destroy everything like if you really want to play a very very tanky build uh especially with the hunter and just chain grenades everywhere for like a titan this is 100 percent the build you want to play again i know void 3.0 is like the go-to right now for almost everything because like you know it's the new thing and it's also really really good but honestly like i feel like once this catches on uh renewal grass are going to be literally one of the best and as you saw earlier on that uh shink i didn't end up getting my grenade energy back because i suppressed it which is really really cool and yeah this this is pretty much the build and also when you freeze a target you actually do more melee damage to them so right there you see you have a yellow number i think it does like 50 percent more melee damage so if you want to like let them simmer in the dust field a little bit you can you know let them do that and then you're gonna do more melee damage to them but yeah as you see you chain dust fields everywhere you can just go melee everything without dying i literally still have max overshield but anyway guys that's going to do all for me i really hope you guys enjoyed this if you do try this build out be sure to let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see more builds again be sure to let me know what character you like to see them on i pretty much main warlock but i am always down to make other builds because having something like this in the game is just insanely fun and i cannot wait to get like all the best odd roll gear you can get for this to make it even better this is just the beginning of this and you already saw what it can do so be sure to go out farm this gear put it built together and let me know how you like it but if you guys did make it this far in the video and enjoy consider subscribing dropping a like and be sure to stick around for more but thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next one peace